After you scream, please. Forward scanners now, please. Impressive sight, isn't it, Father? No bolder evidence of God's grand design, wouldn't you say, Doctor? Evidence? No, I don't think so. All I can see are the remnants of a supernova. Clouds of hydrogen ionized by ultraviolet radiation from the collapsed star. Random patterns of heat and light. Uh, the patterns may be random, but the process, the, the elaborate mechanics underlying it all, is that random? Life, consciousness, is that random too? Who knows, given an infinite amount of space and time, an infinite number of atoms connecting in an infinite combination of ways, by sheer random chance you would create life and physics, even consciousness. Ah, and what created infinity? I'm afraid you've got me on a technicality there. <laughs> now tell me, Father, how does the Jesuit in you reconcile himself with the physicist? There's nothing to reconcile. My order has long been known for its scientific work. Cartography? Ah, uh, aren't you the ones that told Galileo that this business of the Earth revolving around the sun was a lot of rubbish? Now you have me on a technicality, I'm afraid. <laughs> I think we've been down this road before, my friend. Yes. So why don't I just wish you a simple, non-denominational Merry Christmas? Let it go at that. I don't know, though. It isn't Christmas anywhere else in the universe, save by our ship's clocks. Doesn't feel quite right to me somehow. Are you telling me that's not the most magnificent Christmas tree you've ever seen? As a matter of fact, there's a surprise of sorts, a, a present, if you will, waiting for you under the tree. Surprise? Captain Durant wants you on the bridge. She says she's picking up a planet on the long-range sensors and a subspace beacon that's repeating the same message over and over in some alien language. But that's not possible. But when this star went over, it would have destroyed every planet in its system. This planet is fairly remote, about the same distance from the white dwarf star as Pluto is from Earth's sun must have escaped the worst of the explosion. My God, what is that? It's a pylon, a marker like the subspace beacon. Whatever's inside, somebody wanted to make damn sure we found it. I've had crew working inside that vault for the past two hours, pumping it in atmosphere, cataloging artifacts. You may be surprised at what they've turned up. Paintings, hundreds of them, thousands even. And not only paintings, sculptures and books, recordings, all sunk so deep in the bedrock, not even the Nova could touch them. Beautiful, isn't it? According to these star maps, all this was built by the inhabitants of one of the other planets. They knew their sun was dying. And everything they wanted to preserve, their art, their literature, they must have brought here, hoping it would escape the flames. They were human. Yes. Do you think they escaped? The nearest star system is almost a hundred light years away. There was no hope. There's a computer section on the fourth level. Language equivalents, too. Hmm. We're finding data files that seem to contain the entire history of their people. From what we've deciphered so far, they... They've been at peace for nearly a thousand years. Hmm. God have mercy on their souls. And you call this God's mercy, Father, divine justice, allowing a people of such beauty, such intelligence to die for no reason 
Doctor, a hundred suns explode in this galaxy every year, taking down with them untold numbers of civilizations. God can't be held accountable for every random occurrence in the universe. Oh, random. I hear you talking random. Gentlemen, please. I'm less interested in philosophy right now than I am in fact. Father Costigan, our geological team has completed its carbon dating. Can you correlate their data with your own gas velocity and solar flux reading? Tell us exactly when the sun went nova? Of course. Readings were quite precise. I can have a date accurate to a day, Earth time. Captain, what is that? Oh, uh, this is some kind of music cube. Here, listen. Father, there's something I wanted to show you. Matthew? Something wrong? There was something I didn't tell the captain. About when this sun went over. You said it exploded in Earth year 3120 BC. It took 3,120 years for the light from the explosion to reach the Earth. Taking into account the Earth's orbital position, its rotation, the Nova would have been clearly visible in the Eastern Hemisphere. Its light shining more brightly than any other object in the night sky. Computations further indicate that it was directly overhead at 31 degrees, 42 minutes, north latitude, 35 degrees, 12 minutes, east longitude, in a small town in the Judean hills south of Jerusalem. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. I have been sitting here in a mockery of prayer. My heart filled not with love but with rage. Oh, God! There were so many stars you might have used. What was the need to give these people to the fire that the symbol of their passing might light up the skies over Bethlehem? Are you sure of this, Matthew? To the last decimal. I was going to show you this by way of apology for my outburst down on the planet. Now it seems even more appropriate. It's a poem. One of the last things that was transported to the vault, one of the first we discovered. More not for us, for we have known the light, have looked on beauty, have lived in peace and loved. Grieve but for those who go alone, unwise, die in darkness and never see the sun. Whatever destiny was theirs, Father, they fulfilled it. Perhaps we will discover all they achieved in the records they left behind. But their time had come. And in their passing, they passed their light on to another world. I'd like to believe that. Oh. Believe it, Father. Whether it is God's will or, or a pure random chance, one of a hundred suns that explode every year in the cosmos, a balance was struck. And perhaps when we fulfilled whatever destiny is ours to fulfill, perhaps we too will light the way for another world. But you're right, my friend. But you're right. legacy of a long dead people 
a legacy to be kept and cherished and in time bequeathed to a world still unborn from the current inhabitants of the Twilight Zone.